Have you ever wondered how the wealthy seem to effortlessly multiply their money? Today I'm going to introduce you to a powerful financial tool that's been used for centuries and it can really make you look smart too. It's the rule of 72. This deceivingly simple rule can help you estimate how long it takes for your investments to double and even quadruple. We can also use it to help compare different types of investments. But there's a twist, it's often misunderstood and misapplied. In this video, we'll look at some unique but beneficial ways to use the rule of 72. I hope you stick around because this simple rule can give you a financial edge that can change your wealth building game forever. Imagine somebody telling you they purchased $10,000 worth of gold at the end of 1990 at $391 an ounce. And at the end of 2022, it was worth $1,825 an ounce. Maybe they're even bragging a bit because they thought they made a really smart investment because that $10,000 is now worth over $46,000. By the way, those were the actual prices of gold at those times. But have you ever noticed that when we hear something like this, they're never comparing it to what they could have had if maybe they made a different investment? Well, using the rule of 72, I can quickly determine this was a rather poor investment. And I can easily do that in my head using the rule of 72. In fact, they could have easily had an additional $110,000 of profit with one of the most simplest and easiest investments you can make. But before I explain this problem and other examples, let's take a closer look at the rule of 72. The rule of 72 is a shortcut investors can use to determine the number of years it takes to double your money at a specific rate of return. For example, if your account earns an average compounded rate of return of 6%, you simply take 72 divided by 6 and you get 12. Thus, it would take about 12 years for that investment to double. And it's a very good estimate because the actual answer rounded to two decimal places is 11.9 years. This simple calculation is most accurate for rates between 6 and 10, but it remains pretty accurate outside of that range. For instance, at 4% rate of return, we would get 72 divided by 4, which is 18 years for money to double. And the actual number of years rounded to two decimal places is 17.67 years. And for a rate of return of 12%, we get 72 divided by 12, which is 6, and the actual number of years rounded to two decimal places is 6.11 years. Thus, it's an easy calculation we can do without the need of a calculator, and we can use it in a variety of ways. Remember, 72 divided by the rate of growth equals the number of years for something to double. We do want to keep in mind that this is only for compounded growth. But that's exactly how investments grow over time. Now, before we go back and examine that person that was bragging a bit about their gold investment, let's review the actual compounded annual growth rates for the SP500, including the dividends it pays over various periods of time. For the periods of time ending in 2022, over the past 40 years, it made 11.3%. Over the past 30 years, 9.66%. Over the last 20 years, 9.8, and over the last 10 years, 12.6% rate of return. And keep in mind that you can buy the SP500 using an ETF, which we don't have a bunch of unneeded management fees. In fact, several ETFs have an expense ratio as low as 0.03%, making it pretty insignificant. Now, looking at those average rates of returns explains why many use an average rate of return for the SP500 of approximately 10%. But for our example, we'll only use 9% rate of return. By the way, if you like the sound of those returns and would like to learn more about how to easily invest in the SP500, check out my video on this topic. I'll leave a link in the description below. So going back to our problem, the person bought gold at the end of 1990 and held it until the end of 2022, or 32 years. Using an average rate of return for the SP500 of only 9%, we would estimate using the rule of 72 as follows. 72 divided by 9, which equals 8, or money would double every 8 years. 
Since we are looking at a 32-year period, we would have four doubling periods. So we would expect that $10,000 would be worth $20,000 after eight years, $40,000 after 16 years, $80,000 after 24 years, and $160,000 after 32 years. Now, since they could have had $160,000 at a 9% rate of return, I wonder if they'd still be bragging about that $46,000 they ended up with. In fact, over that exact period of time, the SP500 actually had a compounded annual growth rate of 10.21%. Let's subtract the 0.03% expense ratio of an ETF and use 10.18%. At that rate of return, that $10,000 would have been worth over $222,000. Now that $46,000 or so doesn't look so hot. Notice that's an additional $62,000 over the $160,000 just because the rate of return was 10.18% rather than 9%. That's just a little over 1% difference and it made such a huge difference. So that illustrates that we need to be very careful of any fees we may be paying. Remember that most investments increase in value over time. And for many investments, much of it is just due to inflation. If you are a long-term investor, you could simply buy the SP500 and you don't have to know a thing. It has an amazing track record over long periods of time, as we saw earlier. And over extended periods of time, it has allowed money to double approximately every 7.2 years. That's the kind of benchmark we should use to judge investments when somebody's maybe bragging about their gold investment. However, the rule doesn't only apply to the appreciation of assets. You can use the rule to find out how inflation will impact your future. Assume we estimate the long-term inflation rate will be 3% going forward. Dividing 72 by 3 tells us that money will lose half of its value over 24 years. Or, looking at that another way, if we are nearing retirement and we estimate we need $60,000 to maintain our lifestyle, we will need $120,000 per year in 24 years to pay for the exact same goods and services. We can also apply the rule of 72 to debt for a sobering look at the impact of carrying a balance on a credit card. Assume a credit card balance of $5,000 at an interest rate of 18%, which is certainly below today's rates for most credit cards. Because 72 divided by 18 equals four, if you don't pay down that balance, that debt will double to $10,000 in four years and $20,000 four years after that. We can also use the rule 72 to understand the importance of fees charged by financial advisors and their firms. Let's say the total of all the fees on a mutual fund runs around 2%. Let's say that before fees, the fund averages an 8% rate of return, but after fees, it earns 6%. At 8%, money would double every nine years. At 6%, money would double every 12 years. Now, let's consider a long-term investment of 36 years. One $10,000 investment at 8% would have doubled four times. So that 10,000 becomes 20, and then it becomes 40, and then it becomes 80,000, and then that doubles again to 160,000. Now, at 6%, we would only have three doubling periods. So that 10,000 becomes 20, and then it becomes 40,000, and then it becomes 80,000. Thus, 2% in fees cost us $80,000 on just a one-time $10,000 investment. Fees may seem small, but every little bit of fees matters to your investments. The rule of 72 has been around for a long time. So here's some fun facts. The first reference to the rule appeared in the 15th century from the Italian mathematician Luca Pacioli. He was very close friends with Leonardo da Vinci, and he's also widely regarded as the father of accounting. So the rule 72 has been around for a while. But as we saw from the few examples that we've looked at, it's a very useful tool that can be applied to a wide range of applications that impact our life. Plus, 
you'll look so smart by being able to quickly do these calculations in your head right on the spot. I hope you've enjoyed learning about the Rule 72 and a bit about its history. As always, thank you for watching.